Family Theater presents Anne Blythe, Charles Winninger, and Jeff Chandler. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Anne Blythe and Jeff Chandler in Stolen Symphony. To introduce the drama, your host, Charles Winninger. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Tony Lafrano. <laughs> Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are going to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world, Family Theater earns, urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight, Family Theater brings you a half hour of music and melody. So just relax, folks, close your eyes, and dream with us. Maybe we can brush the dust of a tired day out of your mind with a little soothing sympathy. Friends, I'm sorry to break into the music like this and cross up the airwaves, but it's the only chance I'll have to tell you what happened. Well, it, it's my story, and I won't disturb the music much. You see, here's the way it was. This morning at dawn, I was over the Rocky Mountains, flying eastward into the sunrise. It was a routine test flight of the new XP-88. Everything was going smoothly when, when just like that... Something in the motor burst. It gave no warning, just exploded into a shower of oil and flames. There were two or three terrifying seconds realizing what happened before I could move into action. The plane was ablaze when I took the escape hatch and jumped. A brief singeing flame was in my hair, and as I yanked the ripcord, I, I felt the jerk and momentary pause when the chute opened, and, and then I lost consciousness. <laughs> lightly on my feet. It was strange because I was filled with a sudden surge of joy, an exhilaration, a wonderful love of living. It was glorious just to stand there and look around at the mountains in the distance and the trees nearby. And then I saw my parachute being blown across the clearing. It surprised me because I didn't remember unbuckling the straps. And then... Then I saw the body still in the harness being dragged along the ground after the chute. Panic-stricken, I ran after it and tried to stop the chute by catching the shrouds, but my hands passed through the cords and left them untouched. The chute kept billowing in the wind, and dragging after it was the body. I, I couldn't stop it. Finally, the silt caught in the trees and it, at the edge of the clearing. Then it stopped, and I, I saw the face clearly. It was my own. I knew that I was dead. Yes, I... I'd really known that from the moment I saw the body. Some of the clothes about it were burned, but the face was almost untouched. It was strange as I waited and looked. I, I felt that I was waiting for some decision to be made, some judgment that would sum up my life. And then I knew this was the judgment, the decision. I was judge and witness and accused. I saw all the evidence and read the verdict in my own face face hadn't changed. It, it looked exactly as it had when I was alive. Every line in it I had put there myself, hour by hour, by thoughts and deeds through the long years. But only now I, I saw, only now I knew what the lines meant. It was like looking into a mirror, knowing what kind of a guy I really was. Not someone to be damned. I, I knew that, but I didn't think I wanted to go to heaven looking that way either. And then, suddenly, beside me stood a, a beautiful young lady. She was dressed in blue denim trousers and a plaid shirt. Her hair was tousled, and, and she smiled gravely when she spoke. Hiya, Jerry. Uh, all right, I, I guess. 
Congratulations, fella. Yeah, but who? For what? Well, we've done a pretty good job. We? Why, yes, we. What? Well, uh, I've never seen you before. Oh, I... I've been around with you 24 hours a day for 23 years. You... You're an angel? Mm-hmm. An angel? Uh, do all angels have red hair? Only some of us. The seraphim are mostly blonde when they appear. Why, don't you like red hair? I'll change it. Oh, you mean you can... Hey, hey, it's black. Yes. Better this way? Uh, no. Uh, better red. Hmm. I like red myself. Y you can change it to any color? Oh, don't mind the appearances, Jerry. Colors and shapes and distances are only accidents. Oh, but you, you look like... Uh... Oh, certainly. Angels can change into any form they wish. Just name it. Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. You're, you're, you're fine the way you are. Thank you. Hey, does the Lord stand for that? Angels turning into, well, into flaming <laughs> redheads? Oh, Jerry, you don't know him very well. That's why the world's so full of variety. He loves it. I've been living close to him for, well, almost a million years, and then working with the Guardians since the world began, and, well, I can never tell what he'll do next. Oh, but, Jerry, you and I had better get going. Oh, oh wait, there's, there's one thing. Yes? Well, I, I want to ask, could I... Well, I, I'd i like just for a moment to see how, how Mother's taking what happened. You'd like to see her? Could we? Certainly. Just put your hand on my arm. Like, like that? Yes. And just like that, we were home. We walked right through the doors without opening them and right into the kitchen where Mother was frying bacon and eggs for breakfast. Mother moved happily from stove to table and back again. She, she didn't seem at all worried. I knew then that she hadn't yet heard about my crash. She was humming as she walked right through the angel and toward the kitchen door. Billy, Alice, breakfast is ready. You'll have to hurry. Coming, Mother. Okay, Mom. Oh, Mr. Adams, you frightened me. Good morning. Good morning. Some uh, extra bread today? Yes, two loaves, please. Oh, well, thank mm -hmm. you. Won't you have a cup of coffee? No, no thanks. Gotta get along. Beautiful morning. Just look at the way the sun comes through them trees. Just like you see it in the moving pictures. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And the clear blue sky. That means good flying weather. Mm. Oh, you mean uh, for Jerry, mm -hmm. huh? He'll be home tonight. Yeah, well, what's he up to now? Well, he's bringing some kind of a test plane in from the coast. Mm, he is. Margaret Winters, if an that boy knew how much you loved him, he wouldn't be doing a dangerous job like that. He's a good boy, Mr. Adams. Yeah, yeah, I know that. And he has but to I... take the best job he can find. You know he's saving up for his wedding. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah, he's all grown up now. Well, that's how it is. They're here with you today, then they grow up, then they're gone. That's just a, uh, two loaves, huh? Two will be fine. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Adams. I saw new meaning for the simple things that were said and done. In life, it seemed I, I hadn't had time to notice them. My mother's place in our home took on a new importance. I was struck by the beauty of her face. She, she wasn't a handsome woman, but now I could see the goodness written in her features. It was reflected in the little things she did. Making breakfast, talking to the old baker, Pop Adams, washing dishes, and, and loving all of us. Somehow, I'd never felt the full force of her love before. Oh, I, I only wish I could go over to her and tell her. Oh, no, Jerry, I wouldn't try to disturb her. Why don't you hop up here on the ironing board with me? No, no, I'm all right. It's just that well, there are a number of things I wish I'd done to make her happier. Little kindnesses and remembrances. And yet, somehow, I, I know she understands. Yeah, it's her patience that makes her beautiful. Her gentle understanding that sweetness in her voice. Billy, are you up? Alice, breakfast is getting cold. You'll be late for school if you don't hurry. Oh, Mother, I simply must have a new dress. I don't have a decent thing to wear. I'm a high school senior and everybody expects us to look... Well, to look... Yes, yes, I understand, but let's do a little thinking about that later. Hmm? But, Mother... Morning, Mom. Gee, I'll have to hurry. Billy, you're interrupting. Oh, gosh, sis, can't a fellow even say hello? Please don't begin the day arguing. Good morning, son. I'm not arguing. I just told Billy not to interrupt. That'll be all now, Alice. Billy, did you say grace? Yes, Mom. Quick to myself, like. Well, what about saying it slow to yourself for the Lord? Yes, Mom. 
Bless me, Lord, and all these gifts which we have. And thank you, too. Well, that's mixed up, Billy. But you look like a little angel when you act that way. Oh, Mom, I don't want to be an angel. I want to be an aviator, like Jerry. When Jerry was your age, he didn't want to be an aviator. I bet he didn't want to be an angel. No, I guess not. But Jerry's a good boy. Always dependable. Always, Mother? Well, nearly always. But Billy's a good boy, too, Mother. Hey, sis, you feeling sick or something? Why, no, Billy, I think you're sweet. I bet you want me to do something for you. Well, I was wondering if you'll have the time after your paper I bet you have another sorority meeting. No, it's the debate club. I won't have time and my dress is at the cleaners, and you could sort of... Okay, okay. I'll think it over. It was too bad Billy couldn't see what we were watching, the angel and I. There was a struggle of two thoughts going through his mind. And the plain face of a boy took on light lines, like the faint etchings that an artist makes when he begins to paint. And suddenly the lines changed and a brightness lightened his face. He, he smiled as though there were a generous, warm feeling inside him. Okay, sis. I think I'll be able to manage it. Oh, thanks, Billy. See, Mother? Didn't I tell you he's a darling? Yes, I see. And what about you? Oh, Mom. I know she wants to go to the school dance tonight. Well, you're very kind to help her, son. No, I figured it out. You see, Jerry's away most of the time, and then he'll be getting married to Margie, and I'm the only man in the house. So, it's just one of those things. Oh. <laughs> Guess I better get going. <laughs> Bye, Billy, and thanks. Bye, Mom. Goodbye, Goodbye son. Jerry, you see how much fun it is being an angel? Yeah, I guess when I was alive, I, I just didn't see things the way they really are. Well, perhaps it's not so easy. I don't know. It looks very easy now. <laughs> That's because you're just standing by and watching. Maybe, but oh, it seems wonderful to have the chance like Billy had to be kind and generous and make people happy. Can you see now how people grow more beautiful? You know, you know, it seems so simple. I don't know why I never thought of it when I was alive. Jerry, it's time for us to be going. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess it is. <laughs> I didn't know then where we were going. Yet leaving was not like saying goodbye, because I had a realization we'd be separated only for a short time. True, I, I had a feeling of regret for what I might have done but had left undone. And yet I, I felt happy remembering the little I had accomplished. If only Margie would understand. If only... You're thinking she won't understand? Oh, yeah, it's... Well, you'd it... like to go down to Grand Central Station and see Margie. Oh, you, you know where she works? Oh, yes. And that you used to ride into the city with her some mornings. And you'd see her to ticket window four, where she is right now. Oh, hey, you know a lot about Margie. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, quite a lot. Oh? Well, you seem to forget I've been around with you on 24-hour duty. Oh, well, then you, you know how much I, I really love her. Yes. Yes, and it's true love, Jerry, because you respect her. You know, it's strange. I... I somehow think I should be sad because we would have been married next month, and yet... And yet now you're happy. But that's only because you know your love for her is unchanged. Just a little different. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's why I'm so happy now. Well, here we are. Oh, it's a busy place. Everyone's in a hurry. Hey, what do you mean? What do you mean? Conjecture, paper, first edition, hey, hey! Please, Lord, let me sew them fast this afternoon... I want to get home and see if Mom's feeling better. Did you hear what he said? Yes, Jerry. A little prayer. I never knew people prayed like that. You did it yourself sometimes, Jerry. I did? Sure. Most everybody does it at times. Just listen over there. Where? Oh, oh you mean the red cap? Yes. Oh, Lord, Lord. I don't know what people put in a bag that makes them so heavy. And I ain't saying nothing to anyone but you about it. But, Lord... Give me a little patience with this lady that has me toting these things back and forth because she can't make up her mind where she's going. And, Lord, I hope you don't mind if I ask you to send her a little inspiration about a good tip because I've been wasting a powerful lot of time with her, you know that, and I'm just a poor working man. <laughs> That's a very practical prayer. Yes, but sincerity is what God counts most. Well, I can see now what Mother meant when she said you wouldn't come into the city. Yes, it must be confusing with everyone rushing and racing around you. I guess I was just as bad as anyone. It all seems so unnecessary oh, now. some of it's necessary. You see that couple over there? They're rushing to the train gate? Yes, they were just married. Anne, darling, hurry or we'll miss the train. Yes, Joe, I'm coming. Dear God, help us make this a real marriage. 
bless us and help us. Oh, she's praying, too. Certainly, Jerry. A great many people often say little, quiet prayers like that all day long. When I was alive, I never heard anyone talk about it. <laughs> Maybe not, but that's a part of all the wonderful goodness in the world. Yeah. Explains a lot of the kindness I never understood. I don't know why we delayed, but instead of going over to Margie at the window, the angel walked through the crowds around the station. And without a question, I followed obediently behind her. It was interesting to watch the reactions of different people to the little things around them, but I was becoming impatient. Don't be impatient, Jerry. I don't see much purpose in wandering around here when we came down to see Margie. Oh, but there is. You'll discover that. Besides, doesn't this chance to see people help you? Help me? How? Oh, to see the life you led in a new way. Oh, is, is this a kind of judgment of myself? You can call it that. I understand. Yes. Then we're ready to see Margie. We came into the ticket booth where she was working. The angel and I perched on the ledger in which she kept accounts, and we watched her selling tickets and making change. Now I knew with a wonderful certainty why I loved her. There was a charm in her whole manner, a goodness and beauty in her face. She is beautiful, Jerry. <laughs> if she could only hear that, way, it's the greatest compliment she could have received. Only because it's true. But you know, she wasn't always as nice as that. Oh, I always thought she... <laughs> oh, you know, I had trouble with you too, Jerry, until you met her. You improved together. <laughs> she really helped me a great deal, didn't she? Yes, you needed her encouragement. Thank you, Margie. I, I didn't realize how much being in love with you meant to me. I only wish I could tell you. You know, I, I think she must have in some way heard what I was trying to say because she smiled and, and brushed back her hair. For a moment, she seemed so completely happy as she counted out the change. Eighty, ninety, one dollar. Yes, sir, you have ten minutes before the gates open. White plains. One way. Round trip. What do you think I'm trying to do, get lost? <laughs> That'll be a dollar thirty-two. Thirty-five, forty-five, fifty, two dollars. Thank you. Don't thank me, lady. I'm only going because I have to. <laughs> Next. Poughkeepsie. One way, please. Two fifteen. Did they raise the prices? Well, the last time I went to Poughkeepsie... Oh, please, why... madam. There are a number of people waiting, and, well, two fifteen includes the federal tax. Oh, oh, Mr. Johnson, I'm glad you came early. I, I have a special date tonight, and well, I'd like to leave everything to you. I want to run. Oh, uh, this lady's going to Poughkeepsie. Angel, you, you know something? What, Jerry? Well, I, I never realized why Margie used to be tired. And some evenings when she'd want to stay home and I felt like going out, I, I'd get annoyed at her. Now I know what Mother meant when she said I needed patience and understanding if we were going to be happy together. Oh, but I, I love her. I, I love her even more now. I didn't think it'd be like this, that I'd go on loving her when I was dead. Oh, Jerry, you'll be in love with her for all eternity. Oh, I'm glad of that. That's the way I want it. You know, I, I was afraid that after I was dead, You'd I... You'd be a ghost and haunt a house. Yeah, something like that. I never thought it'd be as real as this. It's more real now than when you were alive. Yeah. Everything seems easy to understand now. If, if only... You want to know what will happen when they get word about you at home. Yeah. I'd like to be there. Maybe I could... Oh, I know you'd like to help. Oh, isn't there anything we could do if I could talk to them and say how happy I am? I don't think so. But we'll be there when Margie gets home. And so it was when we walked up the path to our home. Mother was sitting on the front porch, rocking slowly in the old chair that was always hers. She had the open telegram lying in her lap. There were tears on her cheek that she dried quietly with the edge of her apron. Alice was sitting near her, and beside her, Billy was kneeling, holding her hand. Mother, you remember when, when Daddy died two years ago? You remember what, what Jerry said? What was that, son? He said, he said he'd be the man of the house, and that he'd take care of you. Yes, I remember, and he did. He took care of all of us. Well, that's what I wanted to say, Mom. Because now, I'll take care of you. You know that. Yes, son, I know you will. Well, Mom, you said God wanted it to be this way. And he has his, he has his own wise plans. Yes. Yes, I know. It, it's only that... And, Mother, I'll take care of you, too. Mother... I'll... 
There's Margie. Oh. Oh, Billy, don't say anything to her at first. I'll, I'll go down and meet her. Hello, Margie. Hi, Billy. Hey. Why so solemn and serious? You look like you had all the troubles of the world on your shoulders. You know something? Every day you're getting to look more like Jerry, and, oh, that's a big compliment. Thanks, Margie. Jerry home yet? No. No, but Mom's sitting on the porch. You want to go up and sit with her for a while? Mm -hmm. And you can keep me company, Mr. Solemn Face. That was the moment when the angel got the sudden bright idea of breaking into this program. And so we made it into the studio here and sat up on the microphone. No, but I... I guess no one around knows anything about it because the music continues undisturbed. But it was, it was the angel's idea of telling Margie and Mom and Alice and Billy just what happened. Well, I, I guess anyone else who was tuned in could hear too. No, not everyone, Jerry. Only those who would be made happy by listening. Will, will Margie be happy? Oh, yes, very happy. I, I won't lose her. No, Jerry, you won't lose her. When... When will she... Die? Yeah. That's not my department, Jerry. But when her time does come, it will be a gentle death. Margie, when it comes, don't be afraid. It's not hard to die, really. Now, I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting till you come. Jerry, it's time to go now. Yeah. Good night. Good night, Mother and Margie. Alice and Billy. Good night. You have been listening to a special half hour of soothing music. We hope you have been able to dream with us, to dream your own thoughts into a world of new hope. This program came to you through the courtesy of Jerry's Angel. Thank you, Anne Blythe and Jeff Chandler. It is always a pleasure for us of the entertainment world to appear on Family Theater because we believe in the purpose of this program. Many of Family Theater's 300 stars have come back time and again during the past four years. Tonight marks Aunt Blythe's 10th appearance. Anne, won't you favor us on this occasion with one of your favorite songs? Ave Maria. Oh.
Thank you, thank you, Anne Blythe. This is Charles Winninger again. You know, it's nice to meet people who are kind and happy. Of course, it isn't always easy to be that way. We all have our moments. Yes, and we all have difficulties and inconveniences that sometimes get us a little riled up. But you know, that's mostly because something's been misplaced or there's something missing either around the house or in people. We kind of expect people to think of things or do things a certain way and we're upset if they don't. But isn't it true? We often get grouchy and annoyed. And the real reason is there's something missing in ourselves. I guess we hate to admit that, but it's true. Yes, it's the things that are missing that make for unhappiness. And a lot of homes are unhappy because family prayer is missing. That's something worth thinking about for all of us. Because if you want a real happy home, you must have a daily remembrance of God in your home. That's what family prayer is. It's God's wonderful way to bring a family close together in happiness. And that's why we believe that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Anne Blythe and Jeff Chandler in Stolen Symphony with Charles Winninger as your host. Others in our cast were Sarah Selby, Herb Vigran, Cynthia Corley, Gloria McMillan, Ralph Moody, Michael Chapin, and Bill Barron. The script was written by Mark Carney and James B. Reuter with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed for Family Theater by J.F. Mansfield. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Dean Stockwell and Cecil Calloway in Hans Brinker. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.